in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Okay. Broadcaster uh, Common Council uh, meeting for May the 28th. Uh, start out by asking if uh, everyone had a chance to read the uh, council minutes from April the 23rd. Did everybody have a chance to look those over? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve those minutes. Do I have a second? Second. It's moved by Goodman, seconded by Smith. Uh, those in favor signify by raising your right hand, and it is five to nothing. Okay, and the Board of Public Works and Safety uh, minutes for April the 11th and 25th are for information only. It's only got for you to read. Moving on down, uh, communications, uh, fireworks. We've got uh, 4th of July coming up again, folks, and we're going to set the date for the. Uh, Community Fireworks. Ted, if I may interrupt you, Monica Clem from the American Legion. Oh, hi, Monica. Mm -hmm. How are you? I wasn't sure who was going to be here. <laughs> so. Come right on up and say a few words, would you, about the fireworks? <laughs> By the way, thank you for your service. Thank you. Um, I'm just here to represent Post 36, respond to the fireworks, and I understand that city donates a portion of money to the fireworks, so I'm here to, again, ask for that. Yeah, that comes out of everybody's yeah. pocket that's up here. What do you call it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, what was, was it $500? $5,000. $5,000. Oh, I thought it was $5,000. You can't, you can't get fireworks for $500? No. Well, you could if you were just shooting Maybe a couple of hours. Maybe you could get boxes. <laughs> boxes, <laughs> boxes, <laughs> boxes <laughs> sparklers. Yeah, yeah. yeah I believe, I believe it was $5,000. Yeah. Um, anybody else? Yeah. 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 Anybody like to make a motion to uh, continue to do that? It's in our budget. budget. It's in the budget. It is, but we still have to make a motion. No. Okay. It's no. in our budget. Yeah. Set aside every year. Okay. okay. Setting the date, making sure that the Legion and every, that the council was aware of the date that they wanted to set it and the rain date, just in case, correct? The date is July 3rd, the rain date is July 4th. Yeah. Okay. Sure, you don't want to make a motion to spend five thousand dollars, even though it's in the budget. Just keep the meeting going, please. Hmm. A motion from Smith to approve the five thousand dollars <laughs> again this year. Do I have a second? I have a second from Councilman Heidi. Those, those, who, those who approve, signify by raising your right hand. That would be 6-0. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as far as the dates are concerned, is everybody uh, in accord with the dates? The, uh, the primary date is the third, and the backup would be the fourth. Okay. I have a motion to approve the dates. I would say office is going to be open on the fifth. On the fifth? Yes. We're just going to be closed on the fourth. to approve the designated dates July 3rd with uh, back up on the 4th. Second. Smith approved Goodman. Uh, made, Smith made a motion to Goodman. Second. Those in favor? And that's unanimous also. Thank you. Well, listen, and, and seriously, thank you for picking up the sponsorship of the fireworks. Now, this is, what, the third year that you guys have done that? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, and it was... Uh, it was kind of all over the place that you guys did that. It's, it's a natural home for it to be at the to be I'm sure appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Um, budget meeting. Date for the budget meeting. We usually do that at the end of July. First of July. First of July. Second. Uh, if you guys want to stick with that date, it would be the second Tuesday. If you want to stick with the same that we've done in the past, yeah, the ninth. Yes. Okay. Yes, the ninth. Like at four o'clock. Is that what we do? Uh, I don't know. We're, we're doing five o'clock.
we had done five, but I mean, if you guys want to do four, that's fine. We'll get you out of here a little early. Well, we set this meeting, and if we don't finish, we try and do it two weeks later before our actual council meeting. Is there any problem with going at it an hour earlier, four o'clock? That that kind of put everybody in mind. I can be here at four thirty. Four thirty. Yeah, we might might as well leave it at five. Then. It pushes you to. I work until five. So Oh, can we stop? Can we stop the camera? No, five to five. Is that what you so, Okay, so July 9th at five o'clock. Does that work for you, Chase? Yep. Okay. And then we need to continue it and go prior to our normal meeting in July. Yes. And so on the ninth, five p.m. Yeah. Yep. And then ninth of July, and then by the twenty-third. Alternate would be July twenty-third at. Do you want to do five that night as well? Yeah. Or do you want to do four that night? We'll wait Historically, let's, let's wait and see after the night and we'll see how much more we have. That's okay. a good idea. We'll, 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 we'll set the alternate date, date for the 23rd and decide on the time. Yeah. I was going to say, typically we've gotten through everything on the budget night. So, um, any changes to how we handle that agenda as far as the order that we do it? A lot of, sometimes I, I will get a request from one of the guys because they have another meeting that same night. Doesn't so, matter to us. Uh, the okay. orders have to matter. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Pizza on the mayor. Just as long as everything's in order. <laughs> we vote on that pizza on the mayor. So everything's in order? That's right. That's okay, right. I think on the agenda in order, whether he follows it. <laughs> it was a lot easier last year. It was. Because we had pizza, is <laughs> no. Okay, it was, it was nice. It, it went went very smoothly. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the, the lieutenants had everything in order. Okay. Okay. Uh, no public hearings. No unfinished old business. New business. We have tax abatement renewal, and we've got American Axle. And I see that the folks from American Axle are here. Yeah. Yeah, Dean Bundle with my manager. And uh, my right hand man step up to the podium there. <laughs> so we are we are uh, we're excited to uh, really um, tell the board here how, uh, how how far we've expanded here already this year. We had a seventy-five thousand uh, dollar capital investment for twenty nineteen. We've already gone over north of a hundred thousand. We got a new ten and a half ditch case line that wasn't here last year when you visited that we uh, transferred from Three Rivers because they're getting more business. And for 2020, we've already got $3 million capital investment already slated, and we'll probably have north of $5 million. We got a new uh, a new line coming in for 31XX, which is a new General Motors platform that we're going to be doing soon. Oh, your camera is going to be So, uh, very exciting here. We have 53 people on the wall right now. So, we're already two ahead of what we thought we'd be, and we'll be uh, north of 60 people next year. 2020, we'll be three full ship operations, and I suspect we'll be closer to 65 people. And we're looking to expand another truck dock because of the material that's going to be coming in and out. So wonderful. Obviously, American Axle is here for the uh, for the long haul. We got a new president of our division who's really focusing in on our plan. The sixteen million dollar investment that we made last year, we've done very well. The uh, the plant has has uh, quite a turnaround here in the last year. So we're making money and we're getting uh, we're getting new business and we're uh, just tickled to be here and part of Rochester community and uh, hope to continue long standing. We're not going anywhere. So. Well, Dean, as we told you last July. It's tickled to have you here. I mean, that was a impressive open house that you that you threw. It was fun. Shot at mm -hmm. Jillian and I because you went to that open house. You going to do something this year? Yeah, we have another one planned for uh, July, to the field In the end of July. we got to see how this upcoming machine mm -hmm. movement will be, but we plan it about July. I think like July. Well, that's we'll open it to the community again, so anyone else out there that sees us, come on by, stop by, take a look at our facility. Uh, one thing we've also done that we're really trying to work with our associates that we have is, is each quarter, one thing that we kind of not be mandatory, but that's really taken off is doing something in the community. So, you know, we, uh, we did some with Matthew's Church, so we're kind of partnered with them. We're partnered with the uh, with the yeah, Humane Society sure this quarter. Good. So we're really looking to dig our uh, dig our heels and sink ourselves into this community moving forward. So Wonderful. That's the expectation. Wonderful. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you, you, you've certainly got a multitude of things to uh, participate in. I don't know if you've heard though, but there is a group of uh, churches that are putting together a youth center downtown for our youth, 
have that. that. We can get, you, get you more information on that. I know that the, I believe they're looking at the uh, former Fastenal building as, yep. oh, okay. as where they're going to. Yeah, get us the information. We'll be uh, glad to uh, you know, get with the market and the partnership if we can. If we we'll get, get, you, get you some information on that. That's a need we've had for quite a while. Right. Uh, again, you guys you guys are class act. You put on a good, uh, good party last yeah. July and uh, got a good bunch of people. Are you having any trouble getting folks? We're not in trouble keep, uh, getting folks. Some of our lower level level jobs, we have a lot of people that bounce around. Some of our temporary associates. So we, we I think the whole community struggled with that because there's so many right. jobs available. Right. But our uh, our high end people, we have had zero turnover, and uh, oh, that's and they're even getting more and more trained. We're sending them to Three Rivers because that's our sister plan. I worked there for seven years, so I got a lot of friends up there. So I'm getting our people trained up there. We're sending the robotics training. So our, our highly skilled people, we're keeping. It's the lower level people that we're just trying to promote that atmosphere and kind of keep them. But it's better than it was last year, but just like everyone, we, we still have a ways to go. Now, are you working direct with any of your customers now, or are you still tier two in your family? We're still tier two. Everything goes to three orders right now. Okay. And that's, that's the way it's going to stay with the kind of the vision of the, the uh, of our plan is to just focus on machining parts of three orders, and three orders will do all the assemblies. So they're taking on all their machining, and, and we're getting new machines, and we're kind of just sending it to them. What was your last name? Vendel with a V. V E N D A L. Of course, I apologize. I didn't bring my cards with me, but I'll, I'll get some of you. Any any questions? <clears throat> Anybody care to make a motion regarding the tax abatement uh, renewal? Move to approve the continuance of the uh, abatement for American access. Second. Moved by uh, Councilman Smith, seconded by Councilman Clevenger. Those in favor signify by raising your right hand. And it's unanimous. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you for Well, thank you for thank being, you. being a part of our community. Now you have to Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, a couple of associates already would probably love to volunteer some time there. I'll email you soon. <laughs> Boy, you are on a roll. Jeez. You must have won an election or something. You're yeah. pretty vocal tonight. Wow. Weird, weird days. <laughs> okay, we have uh, another tax abatement uh, renewal uh, for uh, uh, Top Industries. Um, we, have, uh, we don't have anybody from Top here. We've got got the SB1 on the, mm -hmm. the They provided all of their paperwork for review. Well, I... Uh, it looks like on their estimated, at least just going down the list, number of employees, they estimated 61, and their actual is 86. Um, looks like their salaries are about double what they estimated. Um, well, and they've, they've, they've certainly had phenomenal growth. Correct. Uh, they've even uh, expanded into a second business racing part of their company. Uh, and as you all know, they uh, acquired Gertie Engines as part of that move. And it's been a it's been a good move for all involved. It was uh, good for the new business that uh, Kevin Birchmeyer was going into, and it was good for Gertie's engine keeps uh, the Gertie name out there in the industry. Anybody have any comments about uh, approving uh, the continuation? Yeah, continuation. Okay, uh, it's moved by Goodman, seconded by Heidi. Those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, is that right? Is it Rochester Metal Products or Advanced Magnetics? Both of them, actually. And I'm just looking I through. Um, I thought Advanced Magnetics had sent their paperwork, but I did not. Yeah, but we approved it last meeting. Yeah, that was the one at the last meeting. We did. Yeah. 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 So yes, Rochester Metal Products, and then you have. We just sent some updated. Yes. Yes. Derek, yes. Did. Derek did. Yes. 
and then your uh, top industries and righteous metal products. Yes. Top industries. Top industries. Yeah. Top industries. Yeah. Rochester Metal Products, a similar situation. They've expanded down there, added a line, brought in a <coughs> new piece of equipment. Uh, continues uh, on a growth pattern down there. Uh, one of the few foundries that are still in operation in the Midwest. A lot of foundries have closed. I know they're continuing to do uh, work with uh, some of the folks we talked to, Caterpillar organization. They're still doing work for them and such. And things are going very well there. Do we have that main sheet like we saw the other shot of? That's what I was, yeah, yes, it is actually mixed up in the middle of theirs. Um, it looks like, yeah, their estimated SB1 was 281 employees, their actuals 293. Uh, salaries were 11 million, 11 eight. Actual is 12.6. Their number of employees retained was estimated and actual 281. And their additional employees was estimated at six and they actually added 12. Yeah. Doing very, very well. So I think they're kind of in the same yeah. boat. I'd entertain a motion to extend their, uh, their debate. So moved. moved by Heidi, seconded by Goodman. Those in favor? It's unanimous. I'll tell you, folks, you're not going to find three more. To serving companies this is pretty easy tonight. You're in good company. Those other two folks. Yeah, we do a lot of work with Rochester. Yeah. You know, so Jason's going to do that every day. that involves the, uh, the water department, water utility. Uh, it, it involves the billing. Shada, would you like to explain what the issue is with the billing the water department? Actually, I think I will divert that to Attorney Perkins. Oh, okay. He, he handles deceased situations. He reviewed, he reviewed it for the water department, right. for the board. The... Uh, I feel like we had this discussion once before when we talked about the water board. Mm -hmm. Is it the water department? Well, we yeah, the and water I, didn't, I didn't know what I had to add to what we talked about before. I don't know. This is just the ordinance to uh, basically allow us. Now I got to find it. You want to give us the Reader's Digest version of what there it is? There you go. Yeah. yeah. The uh, the ordinance is is designed to uh, um, uh, fix the problem the water department was having in terms of. How to how to deal with accounts that were still in the name of deceased individuals? Uh, and, and after I talked with the water department, uh, department about it, what I like to do. That's, uh, that's what we yeah, uh, basically, gentlemen, we were having <coughs> issues where folks would uh, have their name on the water bill and then they'd pass away and then the family would just keep their name on the water bill or whomever picked up the issue behind them would keep the, the deceased member's name on the water bill. Well, first of all, you can't have a contract with a deceased person. So that made us a little left-handed right out of the box. So uh, the, uh, the ordinance uh, rectifies that. Um, and it was uh, accepted by the uh, water department. Do we? Do you have I include, yeah, the resolution I included in the packet from that the water board actually approved, and essentially it's <coughs> just it's it's in favor of the recommendation to modify the common council section 52.104 of the Rochester City Code to permit the water board to. Do to disconnect water service upon reasonable notice to the property that is served to an account of a deceased customer. 
and then well there's was a resolution this ours would be an ordinance yours is an ordinance so yes. we have to we have to vote that through uh the, the copy of the ordinance uh, would you uh, like somebody like to make a motion to uh, read the ordinance do these need to be read uh one time or three times three, three. 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 Uh, we can I move that we read uh, the ordinance uh, first reading in its entirety. Second, uh, moved and seconded. Uh, Smith made a motion. Uh, Thompson seconded. Those in favor. And it's unanimous to read the ordinance in its entirety for the first time. So I can go for it. All right, <clears throat> ordinance number 3-2019, an ordinance permitting disconnection of water service for accounts of deceased <coughs> individuals. Whereas the Common Council of the City of Rochester has determined that accounts for water service should not knowingly be held in the name of deceased individuals. Now therefore be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Rochester that section 52.104 of the Rochester City Code is hereby amended as follows. Additions in bold, deletions in strikeout. 52. Point one zero four disconnection, uh, disconnection of service. A, when the water board orders the water of any consumer shut off for non-payment of charges, supply shall not again be turned on until the consumer shall pay all charges due and in addition pay a turn on charge in the sum of $50. However, this sum shall be $75 if the customer service has been shut off one time in the previous 12 months and $200 if the consumer has been shut off two or more times <coughs> in the previous 12 months. The delinquency herein before mentioned shall be held and construed to mean any and all bills due the waterworks from the consumer, whether the bill shall arise from the occupancy of the same or different premises. B, the past due notice threshold shall be $25. C, upon learning that an account exists in the name of a deceased consumer, the water department may send a letter to the occupant of the property receiving service notifying the occupant that service will be disconnected if a new account is not created for service to the property within a reasonable time as determined by the water board. Okay. Take discussion. Do I have a motion for the second reading of uh, Ordinance 03 2019? In title only. So moved. Second. Moved by uh, Smith, in title only. Seconded by uh, Fitzwater. Those in favor? Okay, uh, second reading and cut by title only, please. Ordinance number 3-2019, an ordinance permitting disconnection of water service for accounts of deceased individuals. Okay, any discussion? I would uh, move to suspend the rules and have the third reading. By I'll, I'll make that motion by title only. I'll second. Moved by Goodman, seconded by uh, Heidi. Those in favor? Sir? Ordinance number 3-2019, an ordinance permitting disconnection of water service for accounts of deceased individuals. Okay. Those in uh, favor, uh, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to adopt. adopt. Ordinance number 3-2019. Good news. Make the motion. Thompson seconded. Those in favor signify by raising your right hand, and it's unanimous. Thank you. Okay down to department heads, Chief Butler. <coughs> Six in Rochester Township, one in the city, one in Richland Township. For vehicle fires, we had one in Newcastle Township. Calls for smoke, we had one in the city. Auto fire alert, we had one in the city, one in Richland Township. Gas leaks, we had two in the city. Accidents, we had two in the city, two in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township, one in Newcastle Township. Medical assist, we had 12 in the city, 10 in Rochester Township, four in Richland Township. Lift assist, we had two in the city. Animal Rescue, one in Richland Township. Canceled calls, one in the city, three in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. Had a total of 57 calls and we conducted one drill. Um, as promised, I did bring the tools, but I'll, I'll just leave them there and after the meeting, if anyone wants to look at them or ask questions, we'll be more than happy to answer your questions on the <coughs> new battery operated Amicus rescue tools. And uh, you remember those are the, uh, what we used to refer to as the 
jaws of life. Yep. You've had to use those three times now? Uh, twice, now. twice now. Twice, I'm twice sorry. Now. Uh, we, we had the, uh, the car that was rolled over in the ditch on 400 North, I believe it was. And then uh, just this morning, um, three miles south of town, uh, two past and seniors getting ready to go on their senior trip, picking up a couple more students. Uh, turning off the highway, the semi did not see his turn signal or his brakes. And we're right there. I'm not saw the pictures on Facebook, but uh, hit it pretty much right in the the B post of the car. Um, the guys were able to get the tools off the truck. I was behind the the first truck, probably four minutes waiting. Uh, I was on my way to work. This happened about 6:30 this morning. Waited on two of the guys to get there, so we're four four minutes behind the the rescue truck. They were able to grab these tools, turn them on, and had the door off by the time I got on scene. So, um, pretty amazing. You don't have to, to worry about getting the generator, throwing the breakers on, on the truck, pulling out the cables and hose, open the compartment, grab them, and go. It's, it's, yeah, they're and, phenomenal, and, aren't they? And yeah. then, with the, with the, when we were in the ditch, um, they, we were way down, um, had to put ladders down so people could climb up and down. It was pretty steep. Uh, and, and just being able to hand the tools down without having the, the hydraulic cables running to them and going on both sides of the car. I said it was inverted. Actually, the cutters were inside the car. We had to cut the back of the seats off so they could see the woman's leg was pinned in her car door. As the car rotated over, her door opened, her leg went through, the door slammed back on her, on her leg. So we had to visually see where her leg was before we started cutting and once we got the car lifted. So. Um, I'm not saying we couldn't have done it with the old set, but this definitely made it made it so much easier. Not only easier, but quicker. Yeah, like I said, even even in the dark area, of course, I said I wouldn't show you. Um, but they have lights right in the forward handle, so as you're in there working in the car, you can see. So I don't know if you can see that, but right in the handles settings there. I, I think I saw it. that in Terminator. Looks like yeah. That. <laughs> I mean, it's just, yeah. <laughs> Pretty easy, pretty quiet compared to what you don't have a generator running, you don't have all the extra noise. Uh, the batteries do have a a quick check where I can check and check the level of my battery at all times. They're quick charge. I got two sets. They're um, a lithium 60, 60 volt. What kind of life are those batteries? Do you? Uh, they last you quite a while. Yeah, uh, we cut when we were training. We cut three cars up and didn't miss a lick. So, so yeah, Brian was up. Your lights are still on. Yeah, they'll go off, but the only thing bright I've had all day. <laughs> uh, depending on your questions, got to be one of the best purchases we've <clears throat> ever made. That's uh, it, it's up there in the top ten. Yeah. yeah. Are you you looking to get another set? I am. I, I, um, I think it's well worth it. I'm, I'm going to try a couple of other departments uh, that don't have a a set or a portable set. I, I'm going to look at selling our backup set and uh, purchase another one. Now, we're not going to take the, the set that's plumbed to the rescue truck. Um, that'll be a default. I mean, some these have been great so far, but there's always that chance that something's going to fail. Or like I've said in the past, we are going to have that incident on 31 where we have multiple cars. These will be able to go up and down the highway. The, the, the one with the truck will be tethered closest, so I'll have to use some strategy, but I think it's going to make a difference down the road. Like I said, sometimes you invest the money and it's not just for today, but it's for it's for the life you're going to save down the road. Not to be cliche or anything, but that's, that's the way we need to look at things. For clarification, uh, looking to sell the old set that has the cables and the, works off the generator and, and Yeah, such. it has a gas powered, so it's gas over hydraulic. That's more cumbersome and heavier and bulkier to move around. Uh, and uh, the new set would go on our new fire truck? Correct. Which is kind of a segue, Tom. We got we're 120 days supposedly out. Of the truck. Are we still on? Correct. Yep, yeah, we're still on. I, I got a call last week, so they should be putting frame rails together uh, this week or next week uh, up in Shalott, Michigan. And then once they get halfway through that process, they will call South Haven and Spartan or Spencer. I'm sorry. Will um, go ahead and they've got the jig for the frame, and they'll start uh, constructing the body. Um, about six weeks in Charlotte at, at uh, Spartan, and then they'll drive it to South Haven where the body will be almost 80% complete from what I understand. And they'll start putting pieces together. And in September, we should have a fire truck. Pretty exciting. 
Um, we, we can make several visits up to South Haven. Um, if any of you are interested in going up and seeing the construction and fabrication that goes into one of these trucks, please get with me if you're more than happy to take you up. I know John Little from the, uh, the Board of Works has gone up already for our, our pre-visit uh, before we, we selected the company and uh, he was impressed. So if anyone's interested, by all means, please get with me and I'll let you know what our schedule is for going up there. Any questions for Tom? Thanks, Chief. Right, fantastic. Thank you. Chief Shots. Uh, good evening. For the month of April, we had a total of 11 accidents. 10 of those were property damage, one was personal injury. Uh, we issued 113 warnings, 99 were traffic, 14 were for city ordinance. A total of 87 offenses, 40 of those were traffic, 45 criminal, and two juvenile. Uh, 55 total case reports for the month, 731 calls for service, 39 lockouts, 11 towed vehicles, and 26 people incarcerated. And then you have the crimes. And those people were lodged for on the next page. Other than that, we've got the triathlon coming up in June, as well as the parade. Big ticket items for us, all hands on deck. Um, getting ready for that, making sure we've got that. the tape and all that good stuff. Nothing as exciting as the Jaws of Life or anything. Get off the fire. Can up a tree, right? Yeah. Uh, that's about it. Um, we've gotten them, both of our Durangos in that we ordered. Go back. We had those in within 40 days. Um, took them up to cops gear. They're back. They're on the road. The, the, uh, the second one we just picked it up today, so they're on the road in service and good to go. Any uh, initial reports on the new stop sign out on Ryan's house? Yeah, I about ran it. <laughs> if, you, if you only about ran it, you're doing better than most. Yeah. yeah. If you're coming. If you're headed north, it does sneak up on you a little bit. It can, yeah. Both uh, the the stop ahead sign going south, um, and yeah, we'll we'll talk about that tomorrow at our department meeting. Maybe we can get some stripes on the road or something like that. But do, do we need we'll a bigger stop ahead sign? Because there is a stop ahead sign out there. I think when you're heading north. There is a stop ahead sign, but yeah. I think there's a tree there is a that tree. takes a little load. Yeah, so okay. Smaller tree that kind of blocks it just a little yeah. bit. I don't know what. Yeah, I mean, well, so like there. maybe we need a larger sign to stop it. This made a difference. We can do it. Four way flashing red if you want. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I know I've got a little for that suggestion. You want to stop something. I mean, yeah, maybe move it, something if we can. Maybe put some markings on the road like we did at 13th and, and Fulton would help, maybe. Um, but yeah, I've, I've heard both. I've heard can't see it. I've heard it helps. So yeah, everyone's got their opinion. Uh, the only ones I've heard complain about are the ones that are usually speeding down the road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was meant to do, kind of get that traffic under control. <clears throat> so. And that's all I have, unless you guys have questions. Uh, the calls for service, I think we jumped up quite a bit compared to the prior three months. It's that typical weather getting better? Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Anybody have any questions for <clears throat> Andy other than uh, stop sign locations? Or? No. The, the firearm with obliterated marks, just like scratching off serial numbers, mm -hmm. that's what it is. Yep. Round off serial numbers. That's illegal. Oh, you're not supposed to do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, when did that go into <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> No, I don't. No. Okay. I don't want to hear anything. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh, yeah. Asking for a friend. For those of you who didn't, uh, who didn't digest all of Andy's report, there there is a friendly banner back and forth between the chiefs. I don't know. Oh, they're not listening. They're not listening. <laughs> they're not listening. <laughs> okay, Randy. Randy for you. How you doing, Randy? Good. 
the 4th Street project, uh, we've kind of been delayed by weather. There, we pretty much all we got to do is the final dirt preparation and seeding, and then they'll strike the street, and then we have a punch list we'll go through. On our federal highway project for the sidewalks, uh, we still got to meet with Commonwealth. Our meeting was scheduled last Thursday, but kind of all, got delayed. Go all heck store. broke loose last Thursday, yeah. Right. <coughs> Then a uh, 50-50 sidewalks. We still got two walks that's got to be done. Uh, and it's been delayed because of the weather. But then we also have new, we have eight new applications that we're gonna have to review and uh, get quotes on to figure out what we can finish this year with what funds we have available. And then I've been loading and chipping not to have any injuries during the, the event and now the goal is to make sure we don't have any injuries in the <coughs> post part of it and you guys are doing well they worked through their holiday and uh, we're going to keep keep working at it uh, I might as well mention at this point that uh, we've been through the park a couple of different times to make evaluations we have a uh, some trees that we designated need to come down uh, along with the ones that have come down and we have an expert from DNR coming in uh, later in the week to uh, evaluate the rest of the trees in the park. Uh, the park uh, needs an electrical refacing. Uh, our our elect electric lines and stuff were blown down, knocked down. We found that uh, there's a lot of patchwork in the electrical end in our park going clear back to when the Round Barn Festival was there. Uh, Bill Walsh analyzed it today and uh, we're going to take this opportunity to clean up all of that and put the necessary electrical underground so that we never have to worry about it again. Uh, so we, we've, got, we've got a lot of work going on. We have a contractor who's come in with a semi who started to move trees out in their entirety, entirety, and uh, that's going to take a while. He filled up a semi today, and I went down, took a look, and couldn't tell he even made a dent. Got a lot of trees down. Probably going to have the park closed for a minimum of two more weeks. We'll just see how the progress of the work goes. We've got uh, a crew coming in uh, here at a later date. It might be as early as this Saturday, but we've got. Uh, the community service folks lined up to come in and you know make a straight line and walk the whole park picking up debris. Uh, it isn't just the down trees and the lines and everything, it's the debris that's strung clear through the park. I would not want to walk through there wearing flip-flops right now. So we've got some work to do, but uh, you folks are doing a great <coughs> job going through the city. Any other questions for Randy? Thank you, sir. How, how is the closure affecting the little the diamonds, baseball diamonds? People still trying to park up there? No, uh, I think the, the little league, the youth baseball league has been working with Ted and Lenny and I, making sure the Pony League and the major league fields are still open. They're on separate electrical service, so their electric is fine. The T-ball field, on the other hand, is part of the city park and was damaged. It took um, a rocket. Yeah, it, it took the backstop uh, of a tree came down or limb came down on the backstop, damaged some of the bleachers and that. So T-ball games have been shifted to Fansler Park. And so the T-ball games will be held at Fansler Park right now until we get that cleaned up. But as far as uh, 
vehicle traffic, Andy, is I think we're okay because we've got the barricades up. I think we're still having some challenges with uh, slip traffic. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. So if you know, just remind everybody they've got to stay out of that park for right now until we can get <coughs> cleaned up. Well, yeah, and then too, we like to say we've got a general contractor who's got some pretty heavy equipment in there now too. He's working with loading stuff, so it's not a it's not a park right now. It is a construction area. Savings on your Who does uh, the parks program? So hmm? Monday. Do they know? Uh, Do they yes. know it's going to be closed for two weeks at least. Yeah. Okay. The park board will be meeting on Thursday to hear their alternative plan to make sure that they have an alternative. I sent it to the board. I'm not sure if you got it though. Is it, uh, what is it? Five, six, six o'clock o'clock Thursday. I'm unavailable. Okay. Is it? Sorry. It, oh, yeah. Did did Nixel send out um, something on that, or can they? I know there's certain things you can and can't send out. We did not notify them about the park closure to send that out. I don't know if we could, because I think quite a few people are connected that way, and at least they'll get it on their cell phone if we can. Can't remember what you can and can't send out. Yeah, I'm not sure. We could call and ask if that's something they could send out for us. We've had we've got it on our uh, both <coughs> Tom and Andy both have posted it on their Facebook pages for I the see. fire department, police department. Uh, we put it on the city website, so we try to get it out yeah. as best as we can. And I I didn't think to call Nick to call and see if they. Did could you talk to Wes? Maybe I'll put something in the paper. Yeah, he had it in his article. I'll be mentioning it on the radio again tomorrow. So, uh, We're trying to get it out as quick as best we can. But it, it's those <coughs> of those folks that I don't read the paper, I don't listen to the radio, I don't watch TV. They certainly ought to be able to read the sign on the barricade. <laughs> I would think we've got to all of the entrances with the barricades and the signage. Now, you know, we have, does this include having kids on skateboards or something to come in now that's happened once in a while but as soon as we see them I think our police officers have handled it and I've seen a group of them that said hey you guys know this is closed this is not a not a playground right now oh okay all right and, you know there's no problem they leave right away but I think we've done about as thorough a job of getting that communicated to folks just uh, just don't want anybody to get hurt a lot of danger places right now. Right, we've got uh, electric poles that are broken, laying over into uh, a lot of damage. One of the pavilions we think had a little problem. It's got a tree draped across the roof. One of the smaller pavilions. Uh, the big pavilion didn't uh, take on any damage in Manitoba Mountain. Didn't take on any damage. So we were fortunate there. But we lost it. We lost the concession stand, yet you can't even tell where it was. <laughs> it was it was kind of it's on its last leg. Yeah. 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 yeah, it is pretty well obliterated. Yeah. 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 It was a tree that's I think the same size. It was that thing that was uh -huh. right on the yeah. right on the inside. You know, you know, if you guys saw any of the cars in town, the truck that got hit by a tree, how fortunate we were. None of those trees went in the direction of someone's bedroom at four o'clock in the morning. Very, very fortunate. Okay, uh, Lenny. Man of the hour, here he comes. Well, I ain't got much to talk about. You've already talked about it. I've covered it. Well, I, wanted to, I wanted to make sure we got <laughs> <sure laughs> her all covered, Lenny. Thank you, did that the last time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking up Russia. Um, without picking up your degree, bags, leaves, uh, clean storm drains. Fix the manhole on third and Pontiac. The uh, riser ring that sits down in there to raise it up and crack, and it kept flipping up as the passing traffic would hit it. So we got that fixed. Um, black tops and holes in various locations around the city. Um, the housing on the pump truck, water truck, it broke. Uh, we got that taken apart, and Tom brought the new one today. So we'll get that back together. As well. We get the things cleaned up as we don't really need to water anything. Um, we finally got the streets open from the fallen trees and working on the trees.
trees and brush laying in the roads in the heart of stead areas. The crews worked overtime and uh, worked on Memorial Day, as you said. Um, they, uh, I can't say enough about uh, how people helped us out and uh, how they, uh, I didn't plan for them to work on Memorial Day, but they called and offered and uh, they uh, go above and beyond. Have for the I'm going to help you a little bit. <clears throat> I, didn't, I didn't cover everything. EMB, we'd like to thank EMB for helping us out. And Matt Strader out of New Holland who came in and uh, ran a piece of equipment, brought a piece of equipment. EMB is going to continue to help us out. I uh, heard from them this afternoon. They have located a tobacco with a clam connection, they call it, yeah. that will be coming in the community very soon to help us. That's, that's what we've been using for our loader. That's what we've got for our right now. It's, it's, it's yeah. not a hook, it's a clamp, they call it. So, right. Um, appreciate that. Uh, any thoughts as to how quickly we will be through the community? Or um, are you going to have a better look at that? Well, two, two weeks. weeks. A couple of weeks also. We'll have a big dent in the community. Okay. Uh, it should be noted talk this over with uh, Councilman Smith, uh, the, the, the rules on, on the trees that are down, if they're in your property, if they're on your property, they've fallen and damaged something or they're laying in your backyard or whatever, contact your insurance carrier. That's where the uh, homeowner's insurance comes into play. If they were in the street, that's what we're working. Well, even the ones that are in the tree lawn, if they fall on your house, we don't move them. Well, it's an act of God. You get your, you have to have your insurance people yeah. involved. So there is a, a need to call your insurance company if you're in that uh, in that mode. <clears throat> we have a lot of folks in town who are doing work. A lot of the tree services and such that oh, yeah. are doing work, and some of them, uh, some of them uh, we're familiar <coughs> with, and some of them we're not. There are some folks from out of town that. But uh, we're doing doing a good job working. They, uh, for the most part, they got Main Street cleaned up today, and uh, they made for the most part got all Jefferson cleaned and started on Pontiac. What's left on uh, Jefferson is the, the bigger stuff that needs to be moved with the loader because it's all laid on top of the brush, and uh, it's kind of hard for one guy to pull his guts out trying to get get the brush out of there. So. Uh, I just ask if they cut cut some stuff to make sure they keep the big stuff some separated from the, uh, the smaller branches and uh, stack it in a nice, nice neat fashion, and that just makes our job a lot easier. Sure. We should mention too that uh, all all hands at the city have been on board. I want to thank you guys, Marcus. You thank you, and Eric's not here right now, but. We've got a member of the water department going around and cleaning storm sewers because yeah. uh, you know we had that terrible rain last night. But uh, with this debris and everything, your storm sewers get plugged up pretty quickly. It's quite a bit of that. Yeah, so we got the got them out cleaning. We've got some help to do that from the water department. So we appreciate all of that. Also, uh, it would uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the great job that. Duke did. In the community. They, they attacked, we coordinated the first day with Duke. They attacked in force, you know, brought in a sample of their outside contractors plus an armada of tree trimmers, about eight trucks. And one company came in and started to work right away. Yeah, absolutely. So, but, uh, again, Lenny's been right in the middle of all that. Good, good job. Being old time and all. Yeah, I know, I know. But uh, to answer your question, we'll probably with them tomorrow. If we get done a little bit earlier with my plans, uh, we'll be in your area. As your area is smaller, I would say a day we can knock all that out in one day. Well, we appreciate it. Appreciate it. And the damage to sidewalks and such, uh, we're not at a stage yet where we can even evaluate all that. We just have to clean up first. Yeah. And then, We've got people asking us already, when are you going to plant a tree for me? That, that's going to be down the road, too. We'll, uh, we'll have to evaluate all of that. Uh, the tree board is uh, going to be meeting and discussing that. 
Yeah, I was going to report some stuff on the park, but it's, 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 all, it's, it's all your park now. personnel now are part of the cleanup. Yeah, right? they're, all they're, with they're the, on the streets. Yeah, driving trucks, all of them, garage, whatever. Was all this staying in town? I appreciate that. All the cleanup, the tree cleanup, and everything—does that stay in town? Then do we take that out to the? Um, We're taking it out to the this, our place. Yeah, that's okay. that's, a, that's a good point, Gary. The very first day this happened, we got a hold of uh, IM, and they immediately gave us a 60-day burn permit. So okay. we can start burning. And told us, if you need more than 60 days, just call us. And we received that in writing today. Yes. But as we burn, we uh, we monitor it. So. We got all hands on deck right now. Uh, get it and it picked up. And uh, well, we've we've dug a huge pit out there. Yeah, we got a big hole. Yeah. And we'll burn as we as we go on. We'll I believe the today. county is burning now. They've uh, started oh, I'm burning. I'm sure they are. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> we haven't started burning yet. Though. No, uh, we're kind of waiting it to dry it out a little bit. Wet, wet, wet stuff. So. But uh, I'd, I'd also like to thank the people that are out there getting the, <clears throat> excuse me, getting the firewood and uh, profiting from getting the wood rather than just take it that we can burn in the pit, you know, when they can well, there's a lot of wood it, to be had. Really good. Yeah, a lot of wood to be had. Okay. Um, while you're still up, I'd uh, like to mention that our fire department was called out last night for the tornado. Correct. Yeah, we sent uh, two trucks down to assist Macy and Akron in, in that part of the county. Um, and some folks trapped in a basement, right? They correct. That was the initial call, and then Macy couldn't couldn't get to them from their department, so they they called us so we could come in from the other side, um, report that no one was injured. They're just shaking, and, and well, you can imagine. But you, you know, you don't think about that. They tell you go to the basement in a tornado. Well, if your house is taken away. You may be trapped in the basement, and that's that happened last night. So yeah. good job, Chief. So yeah. far, again, nobody hurt. Yeah, that's things can be replaced, but bodies can't. Right, right. Any questions for Lenny? Thank you, Lenny. Appreciate it. Thank you, Lenny. Yes. Marcus. <coughs> started I have to make another announcement. Marcus is a brand new father. Um, <laughs> baby girl. Well, as, a, as a new addition, you're yeah, not a brand say. new father. <laughs> you have a new addition. I'm Miley Jane. Yep. I got my girl. Yep. <laughs> Alright, in my lab I had normal plant testing. I finished my lab analysis report for the month. Also finished my lab application, land application report. We installed a new effluent meter. We calibrated all our flow meters. In the plant, we installed a new effluent, effluent and influent chart recorder. We cleaned and opened all pit covers for the summer months. We filled drying beds, our backhoe, bad timing is still up at West Side Sales getting fixed after our 100 point inspection. Um, we are doing training on our new system for Allen pumping to our tanks for our phosphorus, phosphorus removal. Uh, we delivered the new pump to airbag station B. That'll be put in within the next two weeks. We began our summer months ground keepings. Uh, we sold some equipment in the city auction finally. So I think Shava has one more, or is that gone? I didn't look. The, oh, the trailer? Yeah. I obviously didn't, I didn't look. look. <laughs> I think it's gone. Uh, it is gone. Is it gone? No. There you go. <laughs> We have Cottage Watchman at uh, the plant to set up cameras and uh, alarm systems, so he's going to come back with a quote, I believe, next time he's here. My monthly MRO and DMR reports for IDM are complete. In collections, I have locates, which we had a million of them in Costco per week. Uh, Blackwater Complex is now hooked up to the lift station. We repaired boat launch bathrooms after Duke went through our airbag line. Uh, Lucas Street, uh, the lift station in front of uh, Rochester Iron and Metal is now 70% complete. They should be done by the beginning of next week. We assisted the water department on a couple of that's that basic uh, service out there that needed to be. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> we uh, 
this is the water department in a couple weeks. <clears throat> We're continuing our maintenance schedule for our sanitary equipment. We cleaned Blackheader, Schoolview, Arbor Woods, and our 11th Street lift stations. We had 16 backup calls, none were caused by the city. Uh, we replaced our safety harness for our lift truck, and we restocked our repair clamps and couplers for our main brakes. <clears throat> I was here until 11.30 last night. So obviously, when the storm went, we lost power at 4.17. And I was came in at 4.30, and we I was here until 11.30 that night. Those were pretty nice pictures you sent me. They were raining pretty good over on 9th Street. Is that after we had cleaned something? That was when I went to check the main one on 9th Street. Really? Well, that's raining pretty good. We just got a lot of water at one time. Any questions for uh, Marcus? Thank you, sir. Derek is uh, on vacation in the top of town. <coughs> John's out here. Uh, he, uh, he gave you a written report. Uh, I'll go through the dates real quickly here. That they worked on the replaced the fire hydrant at 1527 Van Crowd Avenue. Replace the curb stop at 916 Fulton Avenue. Replace an outside meter pit at 508 Jefferson Street. Replace the fire hydrant across from Tweedledee's Restaurant. Replace the outside meter pit at 228 West 8th Street. Replace the curb stop at 604 Main Street, the dugout. dugout. Made a new one inch tap at 916 Fulton Avenue. Made a new one inch tap at 3619 Manitow Park. Beautification projects, hopefully, most of you have noticed. We've had, uh, had uh, 16 bike racks installed. I want to definitely do a shout out to Craig's Welding. They installed all those, they poured the concrete, and, uh, quite a project for them, and they donated all that time. Of course, they also manufactured them, a modern material, powder coated them, and Hoffman's Body Shop sandblasted them. So that was a completely local project. That, <coughs> We were able to do for roughly about two hundred dollars a rack. Explain to me how those racks are used. You just chain put a bike up alongside it. Chain your bike to it. Chain your bike to it. I got you. It's, 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 a, hitching, really, it's a hitching rail for yeah, a bike. Yeah, it's not meant okay. to hold the rack. Okay. Bike as much okay. as it's just a place to put them and keep them from going up against buildings and leaning against bike rack. You know, using the benches as a place to lock up. They can basically put a chain around it and lock their bike up. That's where it was for. It's not meant to like your typical school rack where you hold, you know, you put your tires in or anything. That's like that. that's what I was asked. How in the world do you use that? And I got to looking at it and I thought, well, this this is kind of like on the back of a car, maybe. No, it doesn't. It's really nothing but it's something you throw a pad padlock around and lock your bike. Lock your bike too. Lock your bike too. Okay. Yeah. Pull the whips all the way. Um, I think they look really nice. They definitely are going to help protect the fence a little bit. The way we kind of position them to help keep some of the skateboarding off of them. Um, there's also been a some of the abandoned buildings. We worked at a art project. Christine Walsh uh, got with the schools and, and the kids drew flower pictures. And uh, Bryce Harsty scanned hundreds of those photos in and then put it on vinyl. And they put that up this weekend, and so now it's on two or three of the buildings downtown. Just really brightened up the looks really nice. The empty yeah. wheels. It added a lot of color that I really, you know, I had to visualize how that was going to come out. And I really came, really happy how that came out. Have you had cooperation from all the building owners who? Uh, yeah, we had enough. Uh, I mean, there, there, there's more we could do at this point. It was just a matter of funds to print all that vinyl and stuff. But uh, we did what we could come up with so far. Maybe there'll be some more. Um, we did send out a fundraising mailing to all the area businesses, basically hoping to 
to raise some funds to help fund RDP for for mostly the funds are needed for the events we hold downtown. And uh, we're kind of exploring trash cans now too. Um, we're gonna try to get some quotes on that and maybe see if we can get those made locally as well. We don't really know if things a little more complicated than the bike rack, but um, it'd be nice to, to kind of start working towards that part of it. Um, Please include Lenny in that design concept because he's the guy that has to see that they're empty. Yeah. Found the trash cans. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's something black. And um, we've talked about maybe painting the ones we have or whatever, but um, there are some nice looking ones that you know, if we have to replace any and hope we would not buy that style. Get something that's different. It's, well, we're trying to make a decision as to exactly the look we want. Something that's going to be functional. Keep the snow out, but still. One thing we found is uh, these trash cans that we have, the advantage of them, they weigh a ton. Uh, yeah, they do, because I've used a few of them. Actually, that's we, we invested in that type, that same type, for the walking trail because the trash barrels were ending up in the creek, being thrown in. Well, there haven't been any of these thrown in the creek. No. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to position them now near the uh, benches a little bit to help there again deter skateboarders from railing the benches. Um, flower planters, I don't know what you guys think, but I think they look wonderful. They really look nice. And they're going to really look good once the flowers start draping down the sides of them. And of course, they're self watering. So it's gonna, I think the flowers are gonna do really well. It's, it's, if we ever stop raining, we might figure out, figure out if that is an advantage. <coughs> they're all planted. Yeah. She yeah. put a trellis in them, so there's flowers crawling up, and then there's gonna be stuff draping down on the sides when it's all said that. We contracted Kimberly with the city. I saw her out there. Yeah. She was, uh, she's our gardener for the city. Uh, she's taking, we bought the pots and she's planted them. And She's also taking care of the seven gardens, including the large one there in front of the city park. Uh, she's taking care of the landscaping here at the city hall and also over at the senior center. She's taking care of that, so she's keeping quite challenged. With she's doing a great job. You know, she was, uh, when we had to, Thursday morning when nothing had power, we stationed one of our gals up in the front window of the on the DME side just to let people know <laughs> the back door. So there's Kim Lance going down the street, eight o'clock that morning, straightening up any uh, any damage to those pots uh, to those yeah. that way. Well she's taking it uh, to her heart and I knew that that would be the case. She's a good one for it. We would like to get a cleanup project where we can blow the sidewalks all you know get a couple backpack blowers, we've got some volunteers that'll do all that. It's kinda nice to coordinate that with the street department so they come along maybe the following day and um, you know, clean, it up. clean the streets but because it just blows into the street and then the next day it blows back on the sidewalk again so I don't know you guys are jammed up right now but it's like Wednesday or Thursday will end up in Akron <laughs> Thursday yeah, will end up in Akron what, uh, just let me know when you know when you guys got to a point where you could get the streets we out again and maybe we can get some guys to just walk the streets and get everything into the street we can do that um Another thing I'd like to maybe at least have some discussion on or think kicking around is maybe creating a bike lane down the sidewalks, right right behind the benches, you know, not away from the building fronts, but giving if we created a designated area where people that are on a bike could more safely go down Main Street without um, being in danger of you know parallel parking cars backing out and stuff, but also not those sidewalks are very wide, especially on Main Street. Um, we could designate a two or three foot lane um, for people to, to ride their bike on the sidewalk. Now that's going to take an ordinance change. Right now there's an ordinance against riding bikes. Right. I, one, one thing about that, the way the curbs are, you'd almost have to have the bike lane in line with, with the ramp so you could, you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. So, I, mean, so I, I think hopefully long term as we do a few more projects downtown and get the storm water and all that done and we can then 
change the way the downtown is. I think we can move the cars out a little bit and create that lane. That way they're on street level, not going up, down, up, down, up, down. Right. Makes sense. I just think in the interim, until we can get to that point of a major, I mean, I'd, be, I'd love to see bike lanes, obviously, in the street. I'd love to see some bikes downtown. I haven't seen any at the, at the racks or anything yet, so let's, let's see what happens there. Well, we've got a lot to deter them. Yeah, but, we do yeah. need to change over <laughs> <laughs> Which was for the sidewalks, yeah, yeah. That's well, I think you better advertise is, that. Mm -hmm. I just well. didn't know what we're. Think about it right now. You've got benches on one side of the mm -hmm. sidewalk, and you've got the pedestrian traffic going into the uh, stores on the other side of the sidewalk. Where are you going to put the bicycles? Which you're not going to have some interference. Plus, with you have traffic. restaurants that have seating outside. On seating the outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to take some uh, engineering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there is interest. Um, among the locals for something like something more pro bike like the bike rentals um, I did a Facebook survey poll and um, the majority of folks and I'll have a more detailed report typed up but the majority of folks um, were against certain bike rentals like the line bikes because of seeing them everywhere but Warsaw I kept hearing a lot about Warsaw and um, the white bikes I don't know who the company is but I'm interested in finding out more. Um, but it, as to Harry, what his point was, a lot of people said, well, they don't want you to ride bikes, but now we have bike racks, so are we supposed to use the bike racks? And there's a lot of mention about a bike lane, and I think you aren't looking for a permanent solution right now, you're just looking for something to promote maybe more bicycling. Um, well, just tell them where they can go. Yeah. Because right now it's very, you know, this is very, there is really no way of going where you have to ride in the street yeah and, and it's not safe to really ride the street behind you know cars that are parked at an angle uh, like that <coughs> yeah i yeah, mean you can cross main street but you can't ride down main street safely so anyway i think i think if you went right behind the uh because the bike racks are kind of lined up with any of the, any of the garden tree lawns and, the flower <coughs> and all that if you went just on the you know towards the buildings on the other side of those bike racks benches you could create a two or three foot lane that would be a safe it would at least tell somebody if they're riding a bike where they should be and, uh, and what then when you get to the crosswalks you don't even go what are your merchants saying what are your uh, I haven't your, them all your Don Peterson yeah. Yeah. your uh, Lance uh, what I mean you got a whole bunch of people who have skin in the game down there who have stores storefronts those are the people we want to hear from Sure. We're, we're meeting with them. The EV committee is doing a business retention program with New Extension Office right now. Um, so we'll be meeting with <coughs> most of the downtown business owners here in the next two months, um, going over concerns they have, a list of questions, survey questions we have to gather information. That's something that we can ask them. No yeah, problem. somebody that has an outdoor dining area, like Don does her outdoor dining, you just stop the bike lane. Prior to that, they're gonna, there's still going to be a place people are going to be able to walk through. Maybe a sign that says, please walk bicycle or something like that in a narrow spot. But it would, uh, I've seen that in Max Kentucky, or in Culver, they have an area like that. And they still allow bikes through, but you have to walk your bike right by that congested area. But, uh, have you considered uh, if, if, bike rental type thing were to come to town or bike sharing, have you thought about a location? I, I mean, one that keeps being brought up is the, um, the trail, of course. Um, but I know it depends on what kind of a program would be implemented, you know, whether or not they have to dock it. Um, I think anything less might be hard to get some support for, you know, displaying it yeah. anywhere. But I didn't know, have you thought about that? Well, I think we're all anxiously love to see nickel plate extended into town and you know that's, that whole project got stalled with the wetlands area that's what i was recently so um if they could get through that hurdle and we can get i mean where the current trailhead is out the car shafter marks property or whatever it's probably not the best spot but if we could get it you know either on 8th street or 9th street um where we're going to have a uh, official trailhead in the building and all that kind of stuff that would be a great place to have you know maybe consider something like that so was it was that project dead in the water or is it something because i of course wasn't i wasn't here when we were 
working on that. And well, I, okay. I don't want to be dangerous about it, but I think basically what happened is when Duke set those big poles, um, those big metal poles through the, the right of way, there was this one area where they had they, they changed directions and they brought a guide wire down, and it was right in the area where we were going to have the, the extension of the trail. So that forced the trail. You can't run it the trail underneath the guide wire. So um, that forced the trail off down into a wetlands area. So they had a big survey done to see how much impact that was going to have on that wetlands. And they determined that they would have to do a boardwalk of some type. Well, the cost of that thing was crazy, what it's done to the cost of the project. And so now, the whole, now they're looking at maybe acquiring some land, some private land. To, to run the trail on it and get around that wetlands area. It's not a very big wetlands area, but who's in charge of that? Or Jerry. Lee, Jerry. Oh, Jerry is. Okay. Jerry Lee's Jerry Lee's 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 basically, go through the wetlands. It's almost a million dollars. Yeah, okay. for just a small thing. Yeah. So um, we're gonna have to figure out something different. Okay. Any questions for Harry? Something else on my notes here. That's it. Any questions? Thanks, Harry. All right. And David's not here. Uh, uh, area Planning Commission, Harry. I have nothing to report. This nothing to report. Uh, Fedco. Councilman Goodman. Fedco met May 2nd. Um, we had the Youth Center Group present uh, their plan. Um, a lot of details about it, and they are looking at the old Fastenal building. Um, are they coming to see us at some point in time? Do you want them on the agenda? Well, I mean, they went to the county. After four, ten, after five. Um, and you probably would I don't know about that, but I mean, we ought to know. I don't want to come see you. Why would they go to the county and they come to us? I'm going to give them money. I didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> I think um, we probably ought to reach out to invite them. Okay. So anyway, their um, their plan they're looking for um, five ten thousand dollar year commitments from uh, private organizations, um, uh, three year commitment. So thirty thousand dollar investment from the private organizations. Uh, they figured that they can operate at fifty thousand a year, and they want to shore up three three years at least. And then once you get through that, then you know the community will have time to figure out if it, if it, you know, something everyone wants to keep around. And then you know they would be looking for continued funding. But so far, I think they have almost 80 percent of what they need. I think they're looking for one more, one more donor. I know the county kicked in uh, five thousand a year for three years, um, and there are a couple of private companies. And then the local church is banded together as taking one of those. So um, they're well well on their way. Um, they just need, I think, one more person to step to the plate to cover that 10000 a year for three years. Um, I mentioned last time about a Blackheader committee. Uh, we've got a Blackheader committee, um, and they're looking at the Blackheader property, which is about 38 acres that can be developed so we're working on a strategy to get that um, developed and, and marketed. <clears throat> um, there's a conversation about possibly purchasing another 17 acres in the area um, so that we could get develop it into 25. Um, last time that was discussed, the price of the acreage was 11,000 an acre. I'm not sure what it is. Right now, the proposed road connection from Blackheader Drive to Indiana 25 is about Two hundred ninety thousand. So we're looking at ways to cut that cost, get that down. Um, but the other question is, you know, how's the restructuring of thirty one going to affect the attractiveness of the Blackbird property? So that's ongoing. There's also a housing committee uh, put together. Um, one thing that Fulton County has a lack of is um, housing trying to bring a lot of people in to fill the open jobs and we don't have a lot of housing available. Uh, new houses, the report on new houses going up is pretty slim. Not, there's not a lot of new houses going in right now. Um, so 
Terrington has a group of people from the county, some realtors, um, talking with Alex Berlin and Tyler Anderson also. Uh, there was a group looking at our area um, from Bloomington for a possible assisted living housing project. That's in the works. Uh, of course, we all know about Schneider Electric in Peru closing. I don't know that it's taken place yet, but there was a job fair that was gonna be put together for those employees. Um, I, did, I did not see an uh, email. Did you see an email go around about that date yet? Not yet. Okay. Yeah. So they're still working on that. Uh, Sally's did get their extension from the Board of Zoning on a time frame for paving the parking lot, so they're here and open. Uh, Dean Foods. Terry had a lead. Uh, site selector was looking for a food processing facility. He contacted Brad Cashaw. Again, was told the building's not available. So he forwarded the lead to Jim Tidd in Miami County and Jerry Chavez in Marshall County. They both have stuck buildings that might fit the bill for them. Terry went back to Dean Foods and asked if an offer from the county or city would help. And he hasn't heard as of this time. So. Um, of course, Jackson is trying to get the concrete pressure approved. They did go out there by, where was that, out in the landfill? Oh, by the landfill. So that's what's that's going on. Um, the phase two on Indiana property was delivered the week of our meeting. Uh, looks like that purchase will be going going forward and that's um the Nesson probably yes Rochester metal products purchasing that um I haven't heard a report on it but the theater group was meeting with Neil Shepard about the marquee um <coughs> you all know Elliot Hayes and about the fifth building so he, he has a lot of work to do with that so we've turned them on to uh, I think the same grant that Harry got for his place to try and get that that finished up. Um, and one interesting fact that we that was thrown out at the uh, the meeting, the Rochester Schools was recently given out one hundred thousand dollars locally in scholarships. Um, in perspective, I think the number from Indianapolis was eighty seven thousand is what they put out in their school. So we're a pretty small community and we'd be able, I mean, that's, this is all local, local money going to the students from our high school. That's pretty interesting. That, you know, we're, we live in a pretty giving community. So that's my report. I'm sure have questions. A couple of additions that have just come about. First of all, Harry, you know, did the uh, Times Theater, did they have any storm damage? We've heard all sorts of. Well, I've heard there's the roof River roof had rolled up, but I don't know. So that was what we heard that there was some roof, severe roof damage done. But, uh, but uh, you don't have any particular I, don't have any hearing. I haven't heard anything. I have pictures of it. You got pictures it, it, of it? There, there was mm -hmm. damage? Yeah, there was damage and enough damage that they were concerned about leaking. Okay. That what, I don't know if they got covered up or not. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dean's building. Uh, had an inquiry from a manufacturer in Wabash who will remain nameless that uh, has a, a real interest in coming to Rochester and a real interest in that building. So we have connected the president of that company with Brad Cashel to, uh, and, and it's unrelated to the food industry, so that might that might strike a better chord than these. So that that's going on right now. Any questions for uh, Councilman Goodman? I have one. Do we know the number of vacant buildings downtown? I don't have that on the top of my head, but we could get that. That'd be very awesome. I don't know if you could just do Main Street or if you can include some of the side streets I'm sure in your number, but. That'd uh, probably be the corridor, so you're probably talking Main Street and then uh, Main Street. What's your, what's your idea? Uh, progress. Got to start with the benchmark. Well, I know. <coughs> you talk about trying to fill those buildings. I'd love to see them all filled. We, you on we, that? We, we've, we've got those numbers somewhere. You're on that committee, aren't you? Mason? I know the 
flagpole's one less we could go. It's not a corridor, but yeah. It's but it's important to me. Yeah, it's important. Look at me. I'm, that's very important. <laughs> yeah, I think there's right. a committee for mm -hmm. for Marty and Pete that have working on that. So. I wasn't sure which group to ask. Yeah, right here there's an RDP. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Mises Chairman, that could be. Okay, uh, Redevelopment Commission, Terry is not here. Uh, we've got a, a meeting uh, Thursday morning. Uh, on the uh, agenda, we've talked about the uh, completion of the road, uh, Apache Drive out uh, south of town, uh, working towards that and uh, connecting some dots. We've got an engineering firm involved in it. The next uh, process is to uh, explore grants after to do that and talking to the stakeholders out there, the property owner plus uh, some the businesses. We would hope that the grant we wish to uh, go after, we can get the matching from the, uh, the stakeholders some contributions. So that's uh, that's part of that. And then we will also be talking about the trail um, to see what progress Terry has made with a uh, an alternative direction rather than through the wetlands. So we'll have an update on that. So that was part of the redevelopment? redevelopment. Okay. Thank you. Okay, park board. Mason? I was out of town and have not received the minutes yet. I didn't make the park board meeting either. Lenny, you want to <laughs> tell us a little bit about the park board meeting? Um. Uh, this basically this um, Lori gave a report on the pool that they was getting ready to uh, open and stuff and uh, just general stuff going on in the park the mowing and stuff like that yeah it was BTS before the storm so we yeah much planning for the pool and the park program okay basically just discussing the, the coming budget meeting what were they going to do with that Uh, Rochester PCA and Council on Aging, Councilman Smith. Yes, sir. Council on Aging actually uh, did not meet last Monday due to some uh, scheduling problems, but a couple of things to mention. Uh, the senior games were held last week, uh, and I... Top Gun, we missed it. We did. We would have won that sack race this year, too. <laughs> Practice. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> received a new van also last week. They call it the medium transit van. I'm not sure how many passengers that is. But um, also for those that would be interested, the, the golf tournament, the annual fundraising golf tournament will be held Saturday, June 8th. For the Council on Aging and month of April, 3,467 trips were made. 3,466 trips for April. 67, yes. 67. I'm sorry, April 67. Yep. For April. Wow. BZA met uh, last Wednesday night. There were two items on the agenda. We've talked a little bit about Rochester Metal. They were there asking for a variance as. They are constructing, a, want to construct a new shed for uh, truck repairs, and that variance was granted, and so they'll actually be adding another building there as well. Uh, the other item was a property owner that wanted to uh, separate into two units uh, or one unit and that was allowed as well in addition uh, a couple of revenue numbers for you the month of april the city building permits electrical and plumbing registrations total one thousand four hundred ninety seven dollars and fifty cents which brings our year-to-date revenue out of Casey's office for $3,308.55. That's for uh, 
Next meeting, the 
become at least a little busier. Oh, uh, I think <laughs> probably will be. Yeah. Uh, the good news is that all of the trees are on the 2018 removal list were done. Well, if they weren't, they are now. Not necessarily, you know. No. Yeah. I've heard through anecdotally through some people that the trees that told them X marked on them still stand. Let me tell you about that. And then I think there was one in the newspaper from the park. It's interesting. Uh, there were trees, sheltering trees, that were taken, good trees that were taken out, and then the bad trees still standing, but it no longer has a full black back blocking for it anymore. Yeah. So, so we've got to get those out. <clears throat> I had a couple questions about sort of addressed earlier what if you had a tree, tree lawn without the property or the street or whatever? And I said, that oh, that's insurance. That's <coughs> I told that person to the contact the insurance company, and then we'll see whatever we need to do you know, after that. Uh, the contact their insurance company. Yeah. The, uh, in keeping with the, uh, the Tree City USA uh, designation that we have, there was a fourth grade field trip on May 20th that they planned to attend. Uh, the informational thing for the fourth graders. Uh, I can give an update on that. We did the Arbor Day property. A list of new trees for removal or uh, trimming up this year, but subject to change. So, and then down the road, I imagine it's going to be replanting the tree lawn. Uh, maybe some homeowners who gun shy don't want anything done, or they have the sidewalks at some people's houses, so I don't know what. But I think we're also getting too late in the season to plant, so they might wait for the fall anyway. So that may be good time-wise. Yeah, there's there's definitely going to be phases involved in all of this. There, first and foremost is all the cleanup. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then the evaluation of damage to sidewalks and tree lawn and what have you. And, and then the process of will we be planting a tree where that one came out? Or, but we'll, we'll also include the homeowners in that decision-making process too. I'll turn to anybody who submits a request for them so we can go into the queue and we'll wait and see. Uh, maybe you know, not plant a <coughs> big elm in a four foot space or a you know, maple right, so it's more appropriate to the space. So, let's sort of look at that. I think you said you'd, you'd be there next week, or my name would be? Well, both would be there. Okay. Um, and that's, that's all I have for the tree board. Okay. How about the EMS? No idea. I'm not sure if we're going to ever meet again. <laughs> <laughs> It's the Lutheran people who set it up, and they, they report, so. Uh, Who's the director? Uh, as far as I know, Pat Unger is still that. Um, Correct, yeah. I think they're just going to give quarterly, but it's more of a, uh, just kind of an information, kind of a run data sheet. They're, uh, they really don't, I mean, they're, they're contracted by the county now. And, uh, so, I mean, it's just kind of a courtesy get together anymore is what it is. But we're, we're well past where we should be for our second quarterly meeting. Should be coming up soon. I, I don't have a date for Pat yet. Well, yeah, so I'm saying we haven't had any no. communication from him, so if there's a meeting, I'll report it. I'll, I'll mention it to him. I'll, okay. I'll see what his intentions are and get back with him. Now, our contract is low at funding. That is all. That's in. Right. I'm sorry? Yes. The low at funding, that's all ended. Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah. Are they still paying? Uh, what year are oh. we on? Is the county still paying? Yeah. No, I, 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 that I'm not, no, I don't think so. I don't know how many years. I thought it was three years. Right? They were paying. And it, it's, it's expired. It's expired. Okay. Yeah, so this, we're, we're no longer obligated to pay. When, when did our obligation end? Uh, five years ago. Okay. So we will fund that.
you handled tonight. Okay. We have uh, no ADA concerns. Shot on nothing. We've got yeah, ADA concerns all over town. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, any legal issues, Andy? I'll just <coughs> mention a couple things. We, uh, uh, I did have some back and forth with the three board. Would you mind speaking up a little bit? I'm I'm just sure they get you. I did have some back and forth with the tree board uh, that might bring a recommendation to the council about uh, 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 modifying their ordinance a little bit. I'm going to guess some of that maybe maybe put on hold a little bit given and more immediate issues. But uh, uh, we also had a, uh, some ordinance violation uh, come up since last time. Uh, one in particular uh, was a couple of weeks ago. And when that kind of thing happened, uh, I don't come and report, but it's been a while since I've mentioned that. One of the things I do for the city is to uh, take ordinance violations that uh, uh, the police have written up with the clerk's office. We treat those much the same way you might treat a small claims case as a civil case on a criminal case. And uh, uh, as is often the case, they show up for the initial hearing and uh, uh, may decide to enter an agreed judgment. We enter an agreed judgment for $100 fine plus the court costs. goal over the years in dealing with the mayor and the chief of police is to uh, make sure it gets their attention on a money-making enterprise for the city uh, uh, and uh, generally if someone is willing to uh, agree to fine and acknowledge it uh, I'm less concerned with how quickly they can get it paid more concerned with uh, the fact that they'll admit to that and there are some cases where they do not and we schedule a short bench trial it's been a little while since And uh, uh, there's one other thing I wanted to mention, but uh, now it's good. But I wanted to mention those two other songs. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to say, you mentioned them already. No, no, I think those are the, the two I wanted to. Oh, the, uh, I did have some uh, additional communication about a, a past uh, grant uh, the city had, had uh, received and administered. That was the uh, issue. brought a request to subordinate the city's existing lien for a right. past no interest kind of a, a, a loan program and it's one of those that some of those some of the challenges of free money is remembering 20 years later how you got it and what your responsibilities for it were and uh, uh, so those are the kind of questions that the line. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Council Bush down here, the wings, etc. situation. We've had uh, some emails flying back and forth, Casey and Terry, uh, stating that uh, they have received their state permit now to, to break ground. Uh, their, their, their hold up now is they've got about five or six of these restaurants going in all around us all over, and they're kind of working at it academically. <coughs> getting too many of them started at one time. But they are certainly committed to, uh, to go to work here pretty soon. So that's where that is. Uh, any other business to be brought forward in the council? I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second and moved. Those in favor? 